What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a uh, video of a knife that is long overdue for this channel. Uh, really excited about this. This is the Steel Will Cut Jack in FRN and D2 Steel. You can see there on the other side. So uh, this has kind of been a knife that uh, most of the knife community has had a look at and has already decided for themselves whether or not it's something that they're interested in. Um, given its um, uh, popularity, uh, it's, it wasn't one that I could ignore. I knew that I would eventually have to get my hands on it because I wanted to you know, kind of see for myself. Um, and because, I mean, the price on it, it's one of those knives where it's like, well, even if you don't like it, you know, you, you're not really going to pay a whole lot for it. Um, depending on where you look, I've noticed that these things tend to run anywhere from 35 to $45. I want to say that I got this on a site that had it listed at 40 and then I had some rewards points with that site. So I was kind of just using them on something. So I actually ended up paying I want to say like $22, $23 for this thing. So that's great. Uh, if you're in that situation, if you're uh, somebody who buys knives regularly and you have a an account with one of those retailers and you build up some rewards points and they've got one of these uh, and you're trying to figure out what to use those rewards points on, this, this is a great example of something that I, I think might be worth it. Anyways, let's do some size comparisons here real quick. The first obvious one, its main competitor, uh, the uh, Ontario Rat Model 1 in D2 Steel, which runs about the same price. These two are kind of, you know, your what, what most consider to be the best budget options or the best bang for your buck in the folding knife world. You can see there the Ontario Rat 1 has it beat by maybe half an inch, something like that. We'll do the Benchmade Griptilian. I need to get this one back to my... This is actually my brother's knife. I borrowed it for uh, size comparisons and talking points in a bunch of different videos, and I have not given it back yet. So let me put that up there. The Benchmade Griptilian and the Cut Jack are almost exactly... In fact, I think they are actually the exact same length. Um, just uh, right about 8 inches. Uh, also making it about the same size as the Manix 2, which uh, if you are familiar with my recent videos, you'll know I'm not caring anymore because I have fallen in love with the Shaman. So we'll go ahead and put the Shaman up here. Shaman's a little bit longer, just a hair longer. I want to say the Shaman's eight and a quarter overall, something like that. Pretty close. But the cutting edge, though, you can see there the, the cutting edge on the um, uh, steel wheel cut jack is probably about exactly the same length given the position of the choil. So interesting. Now, uh, the cut jack is much thinner this way than knives like the, um, the Shaman, um, even actually we'll, we'll do its main competitor as the, uh, comparison here. One handed knife manipulation here. We're, I'm being tested. Um, in terms of overall thickness between these two, let's see if I can get them lined up correctly on my console to give you an accurate representation of thickness. Ah, you know what? It's about... It's about almost exactly the same thickness as the Ontario Rat 1. So, there you go. Really, the big difference there is in length uh, of the knife overall. Now, in terms of the cutting edge, the Ontario Rat Model 1 has the uh, Rat Beat, but not by a whole lot. And you also gain the benefit of having a forward choil. Now, you do have this space up here on the Rat 1. That you could choke up on but it's not really a choil and you do run the risk you run a greater risk of running your finger up on that blade during use whereas here you have more of a traditional choil and because of the ramp here um, or this drop it's a lot harder to run your finger up on the blade though it is still definitely a thing um, this is going to be more of a direct comparison between these two because initially when i first bought the rat i was like do i want the cut jack or do i want the rat which do i want to go with and then once I got it, I was like, well, I should have just, you know, eventually I'm just going to have to get both and compare them. Um, because I do believe, truthfully, that these are two of the best budget options out there right now. And I do, I know that the Cryo is available in D2. The Cryo is a little bit small for me. If they did the larger one in D2 and made it like 40 to 45 bucks, I would be interested in that. Um, but as far as what's out there right now, uh, as far as what I'm interested in that I, I think makes and actually makes a good knife, um, these, these are the two. You know, I, I am kind of in line with what everybody else thinks, but I kind of, I wanted to talk about my thoughts between these two and which one I think is actually better. Um, 
more on the rat. We'll bring, or I'm sorry, not the rat, the cut jack. We'll bring the rat back here in a sec. Um, what you have is a very nice, I've got my fingerprints all over this thing, uh, but what you have is a nice satin finished uh, D2 blade, uh, drop point blade. Um, and then the the actual drop is, is brought very high up to the flat and the swedge. Um, most uh, most um, drop points are, are a lot more. I think uh, the Benchmade Griptilian drop point is like the most classic drop point ever. Um, and there are similarities between the Cut Jacks uh, blade and the Griptilian blade, though you can see the differences there. You know, we're kind we're we're looking close to the same silhouette, but in terms of the flat, you can see on the Griptilian, it is a much larger or taller flat. The swedge starts, you know, at more like mm, 45% uh, down the length of the blade, whereas on the cut jack, the swedge starts all the way back here by the jimping. The flat is much more narrow and extends out only to about here. So in terms of tip strength, the griptilian's going to have better tip strength, and uh, you're going to have a weaker tip here. But in terms of, you know, slicing ability, uh, I think the cut jack is is pretty um, thin behind the edge, given that it actually has a very thin blade stock to start with. Um, so, you know, versus the Griptilian blade shape, which I think is very similar other than the choil, um, you know, your benefits are cutting ability, or a, as far as like it being thin behind the edge, it's thinner behind the edge, um, but you're going to sacrifice some uh, overall blade strength, especially out towards the tip. Um, there are a lot of blades that you could compare this to, um, but the, the Griptilian is, is the one that I had that was the most similar. So you do have a nice thumb ramp up here with functional jimping, simple but functional jimping. I will say it's very, very comfortable to hold this knife, and I'm a huge fan of forward choils. That was actually number one thing that attracted me to this was, uh, besides the, the fact that it was a budget uh, knife that a lot of people said was really great, was the fact that I could get that that grip that I prefer. Um, I mean, that's that the main reason why I love the Manix 2, the Rick Hinder XM18, and the Shaman is this, this you know, grip right here. I love that. I love being able to get up close to the blade, especially if I'm going to put a lot of pressure behind this part right here. Cutting things like thick cardboard or rubber um, which I actually do sometimes. It's really nice to be able to do that comfortably and uh, um, aggressively without feeling like I'm risking cutting my finger too much. You're, I, I'm safer on the Shaman, but I can still do it here and, and be confident that I'm not going to cut my finger. So I really like that. The blade shape, I think, is excellent on this. Uh, this is not CPM D2. This is regular old D2, which is still um, a fantastic blade steel, better than anything else currently available um, in a budget knife right now. You know, some people are going to argue, well, 1095 is really great steel. Okay, but in terms of a, an EDC um, uh, steel in, in the, uh, you know, 30 to $45 range, uh, yeah, D2 is probably going to be the best thing that you're, you're going to be able to get. Uh, Steel Wheel makes a premium version of this um, that is a G10 and M390, and it's made in Italy. And I understand it has better fit and finish, which is interesting. Um, they run a, a range of, of prices right now. You know, I, I've seen them for 120. I've seen them for 170. Uh, they tend to hover around the 140, 150 dollar mark generally. Um, but, uh, you know, other, other than that, I don't know much about the, uh, the upgraded one. Um, but, uh, and I don't know a whole lot about steel wheel in general, because I think this, the cut jack kind of put them on the map, uh, so to speak. I'm sure they do, you know, fans of steel wheel, um, in general might be able to inform me more of other, other things that they make that are really good. Um, but this is kind of the, the only knife that I know of in terms of steel wheel as a whole. You have a nice looking uh, polished show side pivot here, uh, and then you have FRN or plastic handles, um, which have some a nice texture pattern on them, and they do provide yeah, okay traction. It's kind of that, it's kind of the slippery feeling that you get with FRN. Like there's traction there, but it's it's kind of slippery. You know, if this were made out of G10, it would be a little bit more grippy, but it works definitely. Um, it's more so the ergonomics of the handle that are going to lock you into this blade. This is not going anywhere, and it's mainly because of this right here, this pinch setup where you've got this finger locked in behind the flipper tab. That is not going anywhere. You're good. Whether this was textured or not, it really doesn't matter. You know, uh, you're good there. You've got a little, um, I guess that's actually the stop pin back there. 
Yeah, that's what that is, the stop pin. Uh, and then you've got a, uh, a backspacer that's made out of the exact same material as the handles. And it, you know, as far as the backspacer goes, it's set up really well. You've got, it's raised a little bit, so you've got that jimping or texturing back there. So if you really wanted to, if you wanted to hold it like this, I guess, then you're going to be locked in. It's nice to have some texturing back there. And then they've got a really nice lanyard position back here where they just sort of make it part of the backspacer. It's unobtrusive. It's simple. Uh, it's big enough to get paracord through there. You know, they, they did it right. It works just fine. The, um, the, the, uh, screws on the body here, there's two that are holding in the backspacer and essentially just holding everything together. So pretty simple construction. You do have full steel liners on the inside here that have been uh, milled out to sort of, um, uh, create a, uh, a, a nice balance here on the, uh, primary choil as well as reduce the overall weight of the knife. I don't know the exact weight, but I'm going to say this thing probably weighs about three to three and a half ounces. Um, I'm not, I, I don't know that I'm the biggest fan anymore of like finding out the exact weight of a knife, you know, um, if it's really, really heavy, I'm going to say something, you know, but the reason that I don't, you know, a lot of you may have noticed in my videos, I don't, uh, I don't find out the exact weight sometimes before I do a video. And really it's because, you know, this whole thing about knives having to be less than four ounces to be, I, I think that's kind of nonsense. You know, I mean, if a knife is six ounces, but the profile is really good and, uh, the blade shape is really good and the function and the carry and all that's really good, then I don't really care if it weighs six ounces. You know, the thing would have to weigh eight or nine ounces before I was like, eh, it's kind of getting too heavy to justify over, um, uh, you know, even with the benefits of the blade shape and all that stuff. So that's kind of why I just take a guess based on how it feels. This is definitely light enough that it's not going to bother you. You know, you know, right around the three and a half ounce mark, I think you're going to be just fine with this, very happy with it. Um, so that, that's my thoughts on that. Um, pocket clip is set up for right hand or left hand tip up, uh, which is great for me. Those of you who prefer a tip down carry position are going to be disappointed though. I will point out that on a flipper, uh, tip down is especially not a good idea because it puts the flipper tab in a position where it's uh, more accessible to things that you might run into daily and in your pocket with this being at the back, you know, you bump into something and it kicks the blade out like that. Well, now you've got an issue. Uh, whether you are uh, just walking and the blades, you know, sort of trying to poke into your leg, or you don't realize it's open and you reach into your pocket and cut your finger open. So that's it's really not great either way. Though, you know, again, if that's your thing, you know, it's your knife, it's your leg, it's your hand. Carry it however you want. Um, <laughs> that sounded really preachy. Sorry. <laughs> you seriously, you can carry your knife however you want. I don't want to um, change anybody's opinion on anything. That's just my thoughts. Um, so you know, overall. Oh, let's talk about the thing that I'm doing here over and over again that people are probably curious about, the action. Um, this knife flips very well. Um, if you go to push button it, which is, you know, that's my preferred method because of the how they've positioned this this jimp. <laughs> it's not really jimping. Uh, it's just jimp. There's just one little lump there right in the middle, you know. Uh, but where that's positioned it makes more sense to push button it. It does flip reliably though. This is not going to be ultra smooth. It's not going to be like your polished phosphor bronze, um, or your bearing setup that, uh, people have, have, uh, come to, well, have become used to, you know, here recently. Um, it does flip. Uh, it is pretty easy to kick it back into its closed position. The detent is set up very, very well. It's not ultra heavy. It's not ultra light. I'll give you a view of the detent. So, you know, great detent. You can see there, though, that I am working with some resistance, uh, though it, I wouldn't call it like chalky or grindy. It's just, it's resistance. Um, and that's going to come with, you know, the fact that this is just a less expensive knife. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I'm very happy with the action on this, given what I paid for it. And there aren't a, a whole lot of functional flippers in this price range, um, except for the CRKT Hootenanny that I was really impressed with. I've got that on the channel. Um, but most of the time, if I have to flip like this, I don't like it. I want to be able to flip the knife like this with no wrist action. Um, you can light switch it. You can sort of rock back on it. Almost cut my finger off again. I've, uh, I've been doing that a lot lately. Almost cutting my finger off in the middle of a video. Um, didn't get it though. That's just me pushing on the blade. But um, you can rock back on it and flip that way. Though, if you are not um, you know, dedicated to that movement, if you do this, that's what's going to happen. It's not going to lock out completely. Um, or if you just barely 
yeah, it's not going to do it. So you have to really like want be wanting to flip it out that way. The push button method I think works a lot better, but everybody's different. It does work both ways. Um, overall, I think this knife's really great. I, I, I don't like the FRN with the countersunk milled out handles because it feels extra cheap. The uh, Ontario Rat has the exact same uh, material for the um, for the handles, and it's actually more slippery. But these full liners that come all the way out to the outside add just enough heft to this that it, for whatever reason, it just feels like a higher quality knife. Do I think that it's more capable? Um, if it is, it's only because of the excess steel that's on it. Um, I don't know if the blade is really that much thicker. It's just my initial, like the, the part of your brain that you can't control or can't help how it feels. But in, you know, even if you know logic is applied, when you pick something up, your brain just decides for you. You know, how does that feel? Does it feel higher quality? Does it not? And my initial reaction, honestly, is when I pick both of these up, is that this feels cheaper, and this feels more solid and more capable. It just does. Um, but I know that that's probably not the case. I, I honestly think that if I sit down, you know, if I, if I force my brain to, to avoid the natural reaction, I think that both of these are going to handle just about anything that you can throw at them. I don't know that one is going to fail over the other. I mean, you have a simple liner lock construction on both of them. This has more standoffs. You know, maybe that's part of it. Um, the balance on this guy is definitely more butt heavy. Um, so the handle is, is feeling more solid and that's what I'm grabbing onto, um, when I'm picking this up. Um, I don't know that what I'm saying is really going to make a whole lot of sense to anybody watching this because you can't feel what I'm feeling. This just feels lighter and cheaper because of how they did the liners and how they did the scales. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I think it's a perfectly functional knife. I really uh, enjoy how it, how it functions and I definitely love the ergonomics. I'm going to say this, the Kajak has substantially better ergonomics than the, um, than the Rat and the Rat has a more awkward um, massive handle, um, that it really just, you know, it, it's fine, but it's not great. This has excellent ergonomics and it feels really good. This would make a great dependable EDC. I only have one gripe and I'll be honest, it's a pretty big one. Um, this pocket clip, when it came, it was wiggly like that. And I thought, uh, okay, I'll just tighten it down. Well, the first issue is that these Torx head screws, all of them, are that little itty bitty, I don't know what Torx size that is, but it's the it's the size that comes on the center of the Benchmade handle. The reason that so many people get rid of those screws and they get something with a bigger head, uh, it's the one that comes here on the standard grip, Benchmade Griptilian. They are so easy to strip out, and most people are not buying high quality Torx sets. Most people are just buying whatever. So they kind of fit, but they're not really made that well. And then what happens? you turn and then you try, you know, you're at that point where you're like, it's tight, but it, it could probably go tighter. So you twist and then you strip the head or you strip the, uh, the tool, or you just kind of ding everything up and it doesn't, it's just a frustrating size of Torx head. And I'm sure that there are people who are going to roll their eyes and say, you know, don't over tighten things and buy the right tool. Okay. You know, fair enough, but it's still a frustrating size. Um, I would have at least preferred that they used a larger size here, um, especially, you know, it should always be a larger size on the pivot because as far as things, uh, that, you know, need to be adjusted over time go, the pivot is very important. And I, I don't like those tiny Torx head sizes on the pivot, I, though. I think the pivot is actually a larger head. Yeah. Yeah. These are smaller heads down here, but this is that little tiny size. So I went ahead and tightened these things up and guess what? It didn't really help. It's still kind of sloppy, you know? And I can't get them too tight without risking stripping the uh, head of my tool. And I think the close proximity of the screws and the play or the gaps around the holes that are cut on the pocket clip and, and the, you know, how big the screw head, is, or I'm sorry, the screw threads are in relationship to that hole are causing this issue here. So that kind of sucks. Um, I, I don't know. The pocket clip really bugs me. This might be a knife where I just take the pocket clip off of it altogether and just throw it in a tool bag. You know, I, I'm not really sure if I can find a way to make that, um, more stable, um, then, then I'll be happy. But as far as right now, that pocket clip really bums me out. I do not have that issue on, uh, this guy. And it's because I think the holes are, are tighter and, uh, the screws are in, in a better uh, alignment to keep it solid. Um, I, I don't know, you know, um, 
So that, that kind of bothered me. The clip is, is definitely functional, you know, I mean, as far as like getting it in and out of your pants. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. I just don't trust that it's going to stay on there. I feel like those screws might come back out. So that's my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on this knife, you know, great knife pocket clip kind of sucks. Uh, and it feels a little cheap compared to the wrap, but, um, you know, either way, uh, here's the lockup real quick. Cause we're running out of time here. Lockup has stayed, uh, where it was right when I got it. And the centering was also great. It does not rub. So very happy with that. Uh, should you pull the trigger on this knife? Yeah. If you can deal with a pocket clip. Yeah. It's a great, great value. Absolutely. So that is pretty much it for today, guys. You know, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that, that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. I have made a recent purchase of something that has never been on this channel and is also a, 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 comp, um, a, uh, a multitude of things a combination of things that I have never owned before as a knife collector. So I'm really, really excited. It's a really nice piece. Um, so if, uh, if you are interested in that, then stick around because I will likely be showing it towards the end of the week. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.